Hello, hello. This is Mark Cashman. I'm a senior product manager at Microsoft and want to spend a few minutes to share how you can use Microsoft Lists to help track contacts, people that you want to follow up with, remember for the conversation that you had. Maybe you said that you would send them some swag, like I sometimes send Lists socks or list beanies. So I want to make sure that I track who they are and how I can follow up with them and why. And it's really simple use of Microsoft Lists. I'm going to show you a final list that I have created and then backtrack it and show you how I got there, some of the choices that I made. And hopefully it's one of those use cases and scenarios that resonates with you. You can create your own contacts list. You can create a contact list for your team. If you want to do that across multiple members, you can create it in your own personal list space like what I'll show you today. If it's just something that you are using for yourself at work to track the people that you come in contact with, either at events, virtually, over email, no matter how they came in contact with you or you them. It's just a simple way to keep organized with people and maybe some actions that you wanted to take after you met them. So here we are on the Microsoft Lists homepage, the Microsoft Lists app in Microsoft 365. And just for visual simplicity, I'm going to go into full screen mode. But if you can see here, I'm in the Microsoft Lists app within Microsoft 365, and I'm just going to hit F11. So we go to full screen so that you can see a little bit more and hopefully it comes across a little bit more clearly on your end. But if you see here, I've got my contacts list that I created. And as I click into it, you'll see it's pretty straightforward. Rows and columns. I'm tracking the who uh, that I want to uh, follow up with uh, using the title, which I renamed to the name column. I got an image column in case I want to associate a selfie or a business card or their conference uh, badge. And then I'm tracking some things that just are meant for follow-up. Email, phone, which event, when did I meet them, what was the meeting about, maybe it was specific to a question that they had, or it was just a general meetup, or maybe, like I mentioned, it's follow-up for swag. Um, a couple of notes, obviously, nice to have always a notes column. And then I'm just tracking whether I followed up or not. Then it's just a point in time, and you can see I've got a little conditional formatting that if yes, I followed up with them, the row turns green. And I get this little uh, note that says, yes, it's just a yes, no field that I, I put a little uh, smarts to. So that's the look and feel and kind of the what is this. It's just a contacts list. It's easy to access for me through web. I'll show you this in mobile. Uh, and of course, this is something that I have access to because I put it into my personal lists, um, not one that I shared with the team, although just as easy to do in a team space, in Microsoft Teams, on a SharePoint site, wherever it makes sense to track contacts. The two other things that I want to show you that I did is beyond the standard row and column look and feel, I created a calendar view so that I can look back and maybe by calendar see, oh, when did I meet this person? Go back in time, I can see that, yep, this is when I met with my dad. There's the Howard Cashman, and if I click into it, I can see that, you know, we took a nice selfie during coffee. So beyond the calendar view, I've also created a gallery view, which is just, again, a fun way to review maybe more visually. Where was that uh, person that I met when I was at the European SharePoint conference? And if I remember them, what they looked like or remembered what we were doing, like this one here, I had a nice uh, evening event with the point work people, uh, Lars and Klaus. And this is just when we went and had dinner afterwards. But it's a really nice way uh, to see things, visualize your list in a different way. And because it's all about the context, especially if you have images associated to them, then this is just a really nice way to see, oh, that's when I met with the SharePoint monkey, or that's when I went, met with Microsoft Lists, and we talked about X or Y, or they asked me this or that. Uh, so I have three views, uh, very easy to create, standard rows and columns, created a calendar view using the month view. We now have the ability to do it as a week view as well, or gallery view, and then I just controlled what did I want each card to look like. So if you get the sense of uh, this particular list uh, and what I'm tracking and some of the choices I've made, let us start from fresh and build out this list, adding the columns, adding the smarts, creating the views, and you'll see it's very easy to do. So back on Microsoft Lists Home, I'm going to go in create a new list. I did this one as a blank one. So create blank list, give it a new name, My Contacts, 
and I will choose a clipboard and blue just to differentiate with the one. And if you noticed here, if it's just something that I'm using to track my contacts, I'll put it in my list. But I can also create this into any of the team spaces that I have available to me. As you can see here, you just choose one and it's technically where it gets stored. The nice thing if you are creating this for a team is where you store it also means other people can access it, use it, add their own contacts if you're doing it across a team. So I'm going to click Create, and this will give me a new list to work with. Uh, and the first thing that I'm going to do, because what I wanted to track is not just the title, but I want to actually make this the person's name. So I'm going to retitle the title column, which you can now do very easily, rename this column to name. The next column that I want to add is an image column. So I'll scroll down and grab an image column. I'll title this one Selfie just for fun and add the Selfie emoji and click Save. Next I want to add and collect somebody's email and here I chose to make it a hyperlink column solely so that it would be actionable. So I can still name it email but when I actually go in and add somebody's email, it's something I can just click on and it'll start a new email for me. So I'll show you how to do that. You just use the mail to colon and then their email address when you enter it in. Then I want to track the phone number. Here I'm just going to use a text field, call it phone. And then I'm going to go in and create a new choice column to actually pre-populate the events and some of the things that I know I'm going to be doing through the year. So I'm just going to call this event so I can remember well, where where did I meet this person or where did we talk. So I'm just going to add a couple here just for uh, sake of time. I'll add three. So I can add Educon DC, Microsoft 365 Conf, and the upcoming EU Collab Summit. I'm going to add a lot more and I'll go back to the, some of the things that I put into the broader list that I already have that exists. Like these, anything, I can associate it to a color. I can rearrange the order if I have multiple events with similar name or the same company uh, drives these events. Um, and I'm just creating a choice field. I named it events and now I have a couple of choices so that when I go and add a person, I can quickly choose the event without having to type it in. Next, I want to create a date. So a date. Uh, and time column and I'll just call this meet date when did I meet this person and the one thing I wanted to do is set the default value as today's date which is a really nice feature if you're adding a new item whatever the date is today on that day that you're adding the list item is the date that's going to then be associated to that list item so it also means in this case it's the time when you first met or re-met at the certain time or event uh, that person so if I default it to today's date, it at least pre-populates that with me. I can always change it to any date that I desire. Then I'm going to create another choice column and just put in what type of meetup was this. Uh, so I'll put up meet type. And in these choices, I'm going to have that it was maybe a meetup. Or maybe this was a question that I'm going to follow up about. Or my favorite one, which is swag. And this is the one that we'll make sure is Teal for SharePoint and list swag. Question might be something a little bit more red, like I should follow up on a meetup is just a general. We had a great conversation and I just wanted to remember what did we talk about and uh, you know what did we uh, and just what what type of conversation did we have? And then last, I uh, got two more. I'm going to add a multi line of text so that I can put in some notes and I'm just going to call it notes, multiple lines of text, and then. Uh, make sure to click Save, and then a follow-up, which is the last column, which is a yes and no, and I'll just title it that. This is the one that I'm going to add a little bit of smarts to so that I can uh, see visually whether I have followed up with somebody. But I'll set the default as no, because until I actually follow up with them, the answer is no. So I don't, I don't want it to default to yes just yet. So now that we've got our list all set up, columns the way that we want them. Let us see what it looks like to then add an element. So we're going to add some of our, our favorite uh, recent football friends. So this is going to be Messi and Mbappe. And I've got a selfie that I've taken with the two of them for the World Cup 2022. 
uh, here is where if I want to enter in an actionable email, I'm going to say M-E-S-S-I M-B-A P-P-E at worldcup.com solely so that it'll a, does it resolve into uh, an email that looks clickable. Uh, the phone number here is 222-555-1212. And the event here, I wish I could put in the World Cup, but we're going to say we met them at the Microsoft 365 conference. You see here it takes today's date as the meet date, but we know that this is going to be the meetup on the 18th if you're tracking the World Cup. And this is going to be where we're going to maybe get some football swag. And uh, I'm going to show my uh, preference here and hopefully Argentina pulls in the lead with Messi. I've been a Messi fan for a while uh, and like I said we have not yet uh, followed up but I'll certainly be sending him a congratulations or congratulations to Mbappe in France if they win. So we've got our first item click save and there it goes. So if you notice uh, this is the pretty basic information the other thing that I noted was that we wanted to add some smarts into this. So if I go into column settings, format this column, and switch over to format view, I'm going to add the conditional rule. I'll delete this one because I don't need that. I'm going to create my own. And when the column follow-up is equal to yes, then I want this to be green. And I'll show you what that looks like once it takes effect. Now if I go into this list item, and I follow up and after that I send them the answer to the question or whatever information they're looking for I checked follow up meaning yes I followed up and now you can see here the line item has turned green that's what we call row conditional formatting and it's super easy to do especially with choice fields or things like the yes no column set on some criteria is it this or that if yes or no create this color you can do it on the column level as well before we go back to the list that I already have created and have a lot of list items already, let's show what it looks like to add a new item on mobile in the list mobile app for iOS. From the home screen, I'm going to click into contacts, this new list, and it looks great on mobile. I can see as I scroll left to right, it holds the name. I can see the images, the email. If I click into one, you can see all the information, same as you would with any list to be able to get all to the list item information. If I click into one item and look at the image, you can see it full screen, looks great. And now as I add a new item, I'm just going to title this one me, and then I'm going to take a selfie of myself, pardon me here, while I advertise for the Kraken. And that's just now a new image for this list item that gets stored directly with the list. I can choose the event that I met myself at. Any other details, of course, I can fill out, like go Kraken. Don't forget, hockey emoji, go Kraken, go Kraken. And then when I save this down, this is a new list item with the image that's all set and ready for me no matter where I access this list. It's got all the details. I can add more here. I can add more later in the web. And of course, it's just now a new item within this list that's really easy for me to take and cr create a new contact on the go. So here's that new item that I just added on mobile. This is what it now looks like through web, and I've marked that it's for follow-up. Uh, so you can see that now following up with Mark is green, and maybe I want to go in and add a little bit more here so that what I didn't capture in mobile I can follow up and do something like a mail to and we'll do mcashman at microsoft.com and my phone number is 333-555-1212 and the meetup type was the meetup and this was a one-on-one -on -one, uh, selfie that I took with myself so it was a true selfie so there you have it. This is my contacts list that I'm going to use throughout the rest of 2022. And as you saw, getting prepared with some of the uh, events in 2023. I think it's a great use case for lists. It's really easy to do. And of course, you can track and manage additional details, more, fewer, whatever to your heart's content. 
but don't forget to go in and create new views like calendar view. Don't forget to maybe create something that's more visual if you're tracking images. These are really easy to create by going in, create new view, choose whichever view type you want, like I did calendar view, I did month or gallery view. That makes it really easy. And really to use Microsoft Lists to help you track your contacts in whatever way works best for you throughout the year, across events, across different ways that you meet people. It's just an easy way to put the information in, put some smarts in to help you track it, and then have it be something that's easy to access on mobile, easy to access on the web. And of course, if you're sharing any of this information from a team perspective, it's an easy way for everybody to get access to those same contacts and follow up and make sure that you are staying organized throughout the year with the people that you meet and the actions that you told those people you would follow up on. So I hope you love and enjoy Microsoft Lists, and if this gives you an idea of something uh, new to try out, make your own context list. And if you have any other great ideas, please let me know how you're using Microsoft Lists. Have a great rest of 2022 and a great start to 2023.